going on guys? I have a new knife to review for you. Very cool knife. A lot of you guys are familiar with this particular one. This is the Spyderco Civilian. Uh, very interesting knife. Uh, right off the bat, this one was um, sent to me for review, which is very generous. Um, the person sent it with the uh, modified ghetto wave here with the uh, zip tie. So just wanted to mention that I did not want, did not want to take that off. It's not my knife uh, to alter, although it's a simple thing. Uh, I just left it on there. If you're not familiar with this, very simple idea is it basically gives a, a material sticks out. So when you're drawing the knife out of your pocket, it catches the pocket material and opens the blade. So it opens one handed as you're retrieving it from your pocket or wherever it happens to be clipped to. That's the purpose of it, if you didn't already know. So to get into the review, um, I'll start off with some specs to get it out of the way because it's a little boring for some people. But VG10 stainless steel, Spyderco uses it all the time. We're very familiar with that at this point. Uh, 4.12 inches on this very unique blade, which we're going to talk about because this knife is all about the blade. Uh, 5.18 inches closed. We have G10 handle scales on here. And um, it is 4.75 ounces. All right, open length, 9.18 inches. We have a mid lock back design, the boy dent, detent. Um, and you can see our hardware is just some, uh, some Torx. Torque screws, okay? So it's adjustable for you to get some blade play in there. Something interesting I noticed on this knife uh, right away, um, and this is not the first one I've had. I've actually personally owned two of them, but um, because this is a defensive specific knife and I wasn't using it for everyday carry, I ended up trading it. And one I sold originally, and then the second one I had, I traded off for something else I can use. But um, it's uh, lined on one side. There's one uh, handle liner. Stainless steel, and the uh, presentation side or left side is not lined, as you can see. Just uh, interesting. I don't really see Spyderco do this with any other knives. Either they're lined completely on both sides or they're not. Just a unique uh, thing. And this is not drilled out or anything for, uh, for lightning. Um, 4.75 ounces on this, like I said, it's uh, a little bit heavier than some knives, but honestly, because of the design, it's very slim line. It's very long. It doesn't feel um, 4.75 ounces. It, it doesn't feel very heavy to me at all. Um, this knife was specifically built for defense. That's its main purpose, only purpose. Uh, do not use this knife for everyday carry, uh, for use. Don't take it out of your pocket, open your mail with it, don't open boxes with it, don't cut carpet with it, don't do anything except for cut people when they're trying to kill you. That's literally the only reason this knife was even in existence. It was purposely built for defense for people, for, for flesh, skin, and bone. Um, it has a ridiculously amazing slicing capability on that blade, but it's also very fragile, okay? So it is a, a defensive knife, not a utility knife. It's important to know that because some people do get these because they look cool, and they use them, and they find that they're a little bit disappointed when the tip snap. Um, in this particular case, this tip did snap. Now, nice, long, slender blade to a nice point, right? It doesn't even look like it's broken, but believe me, it, it gets even finer at the point. Now I can bring this in real close to show you this, but you can see that it's snapped off. It's squared off on the tip. Actually, I have my jeweler's loop, so if I hold this properly, I could come in even closer to show you that. That tip is squared off, and it should be, whoop, let me do this way, should be even pointier. There we go. So hopefully you can see how and where that is snapped off. So it comes to even more of an acute point. This is completely for defense. Um, this was created in the 90s. Uh, law enforcement uh, company had contacted Spyderco. They wanted to make a, a knife or contract a knife being made uh, for plain uh, clothes officers that were in undercover situations where they could not have a gun. So the only weapon they could have on them was a blade. So they needed an extremely efficient defensive blade. So they came up with this. And you have that very extreme reverse S blade uh, style. We're going to talk about that in a second. Um, very ergonomic handle, G10 scales on this, very slim line, uh, fully enclosed uh, style on this. Um, very simple lockback, so obviously the opening hole, you can operate it one hand. In this case, you know, get a wave which wasn't created on this knife, but you could uh, wave it open if you wanted to uh, in that case. But very, very comfortable, very ergonomic in the hand. Of course, the reverse grip too, which is going to very much excel with this blade design. But Really ergonomic, very, very slim, so it's easy to hide in different places around your body. Uh, pocket clip is swappable and reversible, um, but only on right side carry. Okay, you cannot flip it over to the other side, but you can make it tip up or tip down. Um, 
Let's talk about the blade. This is the most important part of this knife. This was specifically designed, like I said, for defensive purposes. This is not made for you know cutting carpets, not made to open your mail or open packages of other knives, which we all do. Uh, this was made to cut into flesh and bone and fillet a person open pretty much. It's the only purpose behind it. Very, very thin taper on the front end, very thin grind to a very acute point. This is also very, very fragile. If you use this for utility work, you will break it. And in this particular case, this one was broken. The tip was broken because it was used to cut some zip ties. The owner knows the knife wasn't meant for that, but it was a situation where it was the only knife he happened to have on his person. He was up on a big ladder doing some kind of electrical work and, hey, I need a knife, I have a knife, that's what he used it for, and it ended up snapping on him. So a little bit unfortunate with that. Um, see if I can get in nice and close to show you this. But even though it doesn't, look, it doesn't really look like it's broken, it comes to a nice fine point, but in fact it is. You can see that's squared off, and it should have a more acute point on there. Let me get this to focus a little better for you. There we go. Nice shot of that. So that should be even pointier. Now, Spyderco's Reverse S style is very effective. I had this on a couple different models, and one of my favorite, which you guys know of, is the little Spyderco Cricket. Now, this is a utilitarian version of this Reverse S. Obviously called Reverse S because... It's an S shape, but reversed, right? So there's our cutting edge. Nice deep belly for slicing, but it recurves up into a, a hook, very similar to a hawkbill blade, okay? So hawkbill blades, as most of you guys know, once you start cutting into material here, as you drag across or slice, that metal is curved in, so it forces that metal to, to basically cut even deeper. The material has nowhere to go but deeper into that edge, so it's very, very... Uh, effective for slicing. All right, so you have basically the best of both worlds with this type of blade shape. It is a little bit harder to sharpen. Um, not impossible on a stone, even a flat stone, you can use the edges. But um, you get a nice belly for slicing and then it comes up and you have that mini hawk bill. This is good for utility purposes. It's small, it's compact, and it's not an extreme hawk bill in the front, whereas this is. You can see the difference between these two. Okay, so this, if this was a larger version of the Cricut, it would stop here, okay? And your blade would basically look like that. It would come to a point, but it doesn't. It extends even further, even a deeper hook, okay? With a much pointier tip. So this would very easily penetrate into skin. As soon as it's hooked into your skin, your flesh, whatever, you can use this with a lot of different fighting techniques, even uh, blocks you were to hook into the wrist or something on the under, underside of your wrist. You can use this to basically deflect and control someone's arm while deeply cutting into their, their flesh all the way down the bone. It is absolutely devastating to whoever's on the other end of this in any kind of a slash, uh, you know, of any kind. Even someone who was uh, much smaller and, and a little bit weaker, you can be extremely uh, effective with a blade of this kind. So for its purpose, it is completely, probably the best option. If you're looking for a folding self-defense knife, I literally think this is the best thing you can possibly find in the market, hands down. It's strong, it's well-built, it's extremely sharp out of the box. Most of them come with the fully serrated edge, the full spider, uh, spider edge. I have seen them plain edge, but they're very rare. I don't even know if they made production versions of that, to be honest. I've really only seen them uh, production versions in the full spider edge. But very aggressive um, serrated blade on this. Like I said, a cute point, just completely nasty, you know. And in the reverse grip as well, because with that hawkbill blade, you might want to be using it in that, uh, that manner. Just depends on the situation, depends on you know, what, what level of training you have in an um, edge weapon. But anyway, like I said, the best combination of that uh, reverse S and of course the extended tip in a hawkbill design. So extremely, extremely effective. So, um, the price on these things, how much is this awesome knife? Well, they range anywhere from $140 to $190 and believe it or not, I saw this at Walmart's website and they have a really good price on it. $146.41. I'm going to put the link in the description box. I'm not suggesting you go to Walmart. Uh, in fact, I would probably recommend supporting a smaller uh, online knife retailer or even better brick and mortar if you happen to have a knife shop by you. But most of you out there don't have a knife shop anywhere near you. So if you do have to get online, of course, I always recommend getting the cheapest price you can. But, you know, if you have a favorite store, um, there's, there's a few, obviously, that are on YouTube, very active in the community. I would always support them. If you could find it there and it's a reasonable price, please do go by them, um, you know, and support them as well to keep them running. 
But I, I had to mention it because I thought it was funny that uh, Walmart did actually carry this specific model and at a good price, less than 150 bucks. But um, very, very cool knife, strictly defense. That's it. That, that's the only thing this is made for. It's the only thing I will ever recommend it for. Um, I can't tell you how it performs utilitarian-wise because I didn't use it for utilitarian purposes. Uh, when I got this knife, I carried it to see what it would feel like to carry, and it carried very nicely. The pocket clip carries very well. It's well balanced. It is slim line. I don't feel it in the pocket at all. Like I said, 4.75 ounces on this doesn't feel like it. It feels like a three ounce knife to me, if that. Um, but I didn't use it for utilitarian purposes because it's not made for that. Uh, admittingly, I did cut through some paper and some cardboard with the base of the knife. Okay, It's the same VG10 we're used to in all the blades, so I didn't have to do extensive uh, you know, uh, cutting chores with this. But it works well for what it's made for. Will you ever be able to test it? Let's hope not. But it is a certainly cool looking knife and uh, I think you can have a lot of confidence if you were to carry this for defense. So highly, highly recommended. My favorite folding defensive option for a blade, period. Goes great with pretty much any gun you could possibly find. Plus it looks pretty damn cool. And that doesn't hurt a thing, does it? So there's my opinion on the Spyderco Civilian. Uh, if you can afford one, I'd, I'd say pick one up. Absolutely, before they stop making them again. Spyderco is known for Going back and forth, they make so many different knives, they can't possibly have them all in production at one time. So, you know, any Spyderco you ever come across that you really like, just get it. Don't wait because it's going to be harder to find. And, of course, the prices get jacked up once they come out of production. So, that's it. Thanks for watching. Appreciate your time as always. And I hope you guys have a great day. Take care.